Good morning, welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. Today is Monday, June 3rd, 2013. At least 120 people have been killed in a massive fire in China that raged through a poultry plant in northeastern China. Trapped workers inside of a cluttered slaughterhouse. Uh, the name of the plant is uh, the Jilin Biofang Poultry Plant. It's located in uh, uh, Jilin Province in Mijie Township in the northeastern part of the country. According to uh, the Chinese TV network, the fire broke out during a change of shifts and there may have in fact been about 350 workers at the plant. According to the Chinese TV again, the plant's complicated interior with narrow exits as well as a locked front gate, that will do it, made escape difficult. Uh, Chinese TV is showing about 500 firefighters still at the scene, uh, continuing to try to put the fire out. Smoke is billowing up from prefabricated cement structures topped with corrugated iron roofs. This death toll is going to increase. In Central Europe, uh, swollen rivers are causing some extreme flooding conditions. Yesterday, the Prime Minister of the Czech Republic, Peter Nekas, declared a state of emergency for most of the nation after swollen rivers uh, are threatening Prague's historic center. Uh, the Vlatava River, which runs through Prague, apparently is set to overflow. Underground stations and public transport has been shut down in that area. Um, also, rising rivers have forced the closures of highways and railway lines throughout western and southern Bohemia. Utility companies are reporting outages throughout the region after floods damaged a number of substations. Rising waters from three rivers poured into the old town of Passau in southeast Germany this morning. Uh, rescuers have had to use boats to transport uh, residents from flooded parts of the city. Uh, the water levels are already the highest in 70 years. Uh, according to a government spokesman, the situation is extremely dramatic. Uh, water from the Danube, Ills, and Inn rivers have risen above markers set in 1954 when the city suffered its worst flooding in living memory, and this is apparently going to get worse. The Prime Minister of Turkey, uh, Erdogan, on Monday is uh, dismissing street protests against his rule as actions organized by extremists. He's described them as a temporary blip, and he's angrily rejected comparisons with the Arab Spring uprisings. Uh, these protests sort of uh, flared up out of nowhere. Uh, apparently a number of uh, Turks, mainly secular-minded Turks, uh, took to the uh, central square in Istanbul uh, to protest the uh, government's plans to take down a number of historic trees in the area. Uh, at first it seemed to be a pretty benign protest, but over the weekend uh, tens of thousands of similar-minded people have joined the protests they all seem to be mainly young people. None of them are wearing Islamic garb. None of them are wearing chadoris. They're all on uh, Twitter and Facebook, and they're protesting against the government's uh, move to the right, i.e. Uh, in instituting Islamic types of laws and regulations and stripping away in a very slow manner uh, pro-Western or secular uh, freedoms that the government uh, had previously been granting. So as a result now, it seems as if the uh, Turks are facing a little crisis themselves. The main stock market in Istanbul went down about 6.5% after opening today. Um, again now, there's a uh, significant presence right now in uh, downtown Istanbul as well as protests in the capital of Ankara. And also a similar crackdown going on by police in Izmir, the third largest city in Turkey. There is a problem here that's unfolding. Meanwhile, this morning in uh, Taiwan, it was a pretty good-sized earthquake. It was a 6.2, struck at about 5.40 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time, about 30 kilometers east of the uh, central Nantau country, county area. Uh, killed at least two people. Skyscrapers in uh, the capital of Taipei were violently shaking, and the quake was felt as far away as Hong Kong, which is about 400 miles away. Meanwhile, in the United States on Friday, uh, another very severe tornado system swept through, of all places, Oklahoma, killed another 13 people. The largest strike occurred in the Oklahoma town of El Reno. Uh, more bad weather was on the way in that area today. Of course, the uh, EF5 Moore tornado occurred two weeks ago. That killed 24 people. Also on Friday afternoon in the United States, in Houston, Texas, four firefighters were killed in a blaze 
Uh, it's the worst uh, toll for the Houston Fire Department in its 118 year history. Apparently what occurred is the fire broke out uh, just after noon at a restaurant connected to a motel, which was along a busy freeway. Uh, firefighters said they took a high risk in aggressively fighting the fire because they believed that people were trapped inside the motel. When a portion of that building collapsed, the firefighters were also trapped. There's also a uh, pretty strong wildfire in Southern California, which is whipping around. It's uh, expanded now to about 25,000 acres. Hundreds of homes remain under evacuation orders. The fire is burning in the Palmdale area north of Los Angeles. It's called the Powerhouse Fire. It's about 20% contained. It's uh, threatening about 1,000 homes as of right now. And uh, there's an interesting couple of stories. Risk managers in the United States looking for significant property insurance capacity are beginning to look at Chinese insurers as Chinese insurers are beginning to come into the U.S. Uh, the Beijing-based People's Insurance Company and the Ch Shanghai-based China Pacific Property Insurance Company are beginning to take up to 10% lines on property placements in the U.S. up to a billion dollars. Several major U.S. companies say that they have accessed or are considering accessing Chinese capacity. Uh, Ford Motor Company, for example, said that they worked with uh, these two Chinese insurers for the past three or four years, but the capacity that they had been offering was fairly low. Now, however, um, these, quote, solid companies are beginning to compete against uh, American companies and European companies. Very interesting. Well, that's only a matter of time. It is a global marketplace, so why shouldn't the Chinese be here? We're there. That's the news for today. If we have any breaking news, we'll come back and tell you. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.